so we're back again on Sunday, uh, the Lord's Day, <laughs> um, and it is August the 22nd, 2021. Uh, this is today's message from my friend uh, Leela, a friend of mine who lives around and around the world while I'm lying and lonely, and I live in the state, I can't talk, <laughs> I live in the state of Oklahoma, and uh, I've mostly lived in the state of Oklahoma for almost my entire life. Anyway, uh, yeah, so today's message of Leela, if you're watching, is I used to work in a movie theater. And it was um, simultaneously the best and worst job I ever had. <laughs> um, I worked there for almost four years. Uh, I started as an usher, uh, which meant I would uh, clean the theaters after the movies were over get them ready for the next showing, and uh, that would be all I would do, you know, and then I would do other stuff, like, you know, if somebody spilled something in the lobby and mop it up, or um, I'd clean the bathroom, and I would uh, take the trash out uh, to a compactor behind the building, uh, uh, you know, it was a lot of maintenance work, and I enjoyed it because I was my own boss, I, you know, I would spend the whole day just working my so, you know, every now and again I would have somebody come help me clean but usually especially during the day and during the school year from the right there uh, it was really simple and uh, you know, in the worst theaters a cleaner always kids movies or like big budget action blockbuster type movies like Marvel movies uh, those are the worst those are the worst to clean, uh, clean. and uh so I did that for a long time, and I enjoyed it. And I worked with some really, really great people who are still some of my favorite people even now. And um, uh, for the most part, the management was cool. And I met some great friends working there. And, um, and then later, the management changed. We had a different GM. And this guy was literally the worst boss I've ever had in my entire life. This guy is a pure D asshole. Uh, complete cocksucker. And not like in a derogatory uh, reference to homosexuality, but like uh, an unwanted, non-consensual, someone trying to suck a cock kind of situation. Um, this guy was just a, like a complete piece of shit. And still is. And, um, everybody hated him, rightly so, because he was a complete dick, he was condescending, he didn't think anybody knew what they were doing. He didn't know what he was doing, but thought he knew everything. Uh, he'd never been a boss before, or especially in GM. Uh, he changed a lot of things that were working just because he wanted to change them because he could. Um, he, he, he did stupid shit and then blamed other people and fired them for his mistakes. Uh, fired like, all the best staff we had and then the rest of the staff like quit and then we hired new people and they couldn't stand him so they quit and then I'd have to train everybody uh, he did hire uh, I had to beg him for full time I was there longer than ever, all the other employees except management and he, he still wouldn't give me full time until I basically like, st didn't, wouldn't stop bugging me for it and uh Worst of all, he eliminated the usher position. Uh, he basically eliminated the position so an employee could clean the theaters. The management in between doing paperwork and stuff would clean the theaters. And sometimes, if it was a big theater, he'd call the, you know, they would call other regular employees to clean. But the position of just an employee working usher was no more. Uh, which meant I had to switch to concessions, which I hated. <laughs> I hate, I hated, I hated. I've never liked working with food or around food or working in any kind of job where I deal with people directly, which sadly has been most of the jobs I've had. I've had to deal with people directly because uh, most of the jobs I've worked were in some kind of customer service capacity. And uh, it just sucks. I really hate that kind of work. I hate those kind of jobs. Um, I, uh, if I could, I would never work in a job like that again. And I especially never want to work in a concession stand again. 
so so I had to switch to concessions, which I didn't like. And uh, so it was bad enough I had to work for this dude, this you know asshole. But now I was working in a position I hated for this asshole. And what was even worse is a lot of you know a lot of the best people had left, and a lot of some of my friends had left. And uh, I made some you know. There was some good coworkers I had, you know, I would train them out of the concession, but a lot of them didn't last. And uh, during his tenure as the GM there, which was about two years or so, about a year and a half or two years, um, he completely fucked everything up and he changed how he did things. And, uh, he would blame all kinds of things on everybody and uh, would, would find minute reasons to fire people that he didn't like. Uh, basically make up excuses to fire them. And, um, I, uh, I hate him. I really hate him. Um, because I never work with him all the time. And he was a, a huge prick. And he was even more of a prick to me because I refused to bend over and let him fuck me in the ass. I would, uh, rebel against his stupidity or call him out on things uh, or, or completely disregard his rules or, you know, talk shit about it, which I did. You know. But, you know, I made it abundantly clear that while, you know, I was civil, I didn't like him. And I did everything but come out and say I don't like you. Like, everything up to that point Excluding saying I don't like you, I showed it pretty well. Um, and he didn't like me because, like, unlike everyone else, I refused to play his game and kiss his ass. And um, I thought about quitting, but I was paranoid because I didn't know if I could get a job that I could hold on, uh, that I could hold down as long as I had that job. Um, I'd never held a job longer than maybe a year, most of the time, less than a year. So I was concerned about my future and felt like I had to kind of just go and suffer uh, to keep a job, to keep making money. And that's what I did. I held that job as long as I could, uh, despite the conditions I'm working under. And a lot of people protested. Uh, some people went to corporate and talked about everything he was doing. And, you know, of course, they didn't do anything because they're a corporation. Uh, they don't care about employees. They barely care about, you know, just management, but they especially don't care about just a regular uh, employee under management, you know, they're just piss on us to them. So, um, so nothing was done. He was allowed to continue to be a complete dick. He was allowed to continue his reign of terror and to make everyone's life miserable. And, uh, he eventually fired me, uh, indirectly. Uh, he lied about a bunch of stuff. And took other things I'd said, like jokes and things out of context to make it look like I was just being this really immature, irresponsible employee that was, uh, you know, making people uncomfortable and things, which wasn't the case uh, at all. Um, you know, taking things out of context or, you know, or he would take a joke I'd said like three years before say, act as if, like, I would actually say that to a customer or something, which is, of course, not the case. Um, you know, I explained that I was joking, you know, I, you know, I stated my part of it, you know, but I knew that, I knew before I was even done kind of, you know, explaining my side of it, I was fired, and he basically strong-armed me into the position he'd been, uh, voluntarily resigning or just outright firing me. Which, in retrospect, I think I should have just let him fire me because then I could have at least drawn unemployment. Um, uh, because really, there was no justifiable, justifiable means to fire him. Uh, you know, he basically is a liar, and he lied to corporate. And I, uh, you know, and right after he fired me, like I think a day or maybe two days later, he literally transferred to another. Um, he held out long enough just to get rid of me, basically. And, um, you know, I 
and just the fact that, you know, he did stupid shit and fired other people for it, or would have his assistant manager and fire other people in his place, which is a really chicken shit thing to do, I think. If you don't have the balls to, you know, come to call somebody into your office and fire them in person, I think that's just uh, a pure dick move. And, um, yeah, I hope, uh, I hope that he got fired, or I hope that, you know, whatever he's doing now, he's fucking up so bad that he's getting fired. Um, I hope he's unable to find other management positions. Um, I wish, I, I wish the worst for him in every way. Um, yeah. I want, you know, I want nothing but misfortune for him. I want nothing but terrible shit to happen to him because he deserves it. He's a piece of shit. And, um, made that job hell uh, to where I liked my co-workers the job was easy but I hated it because I had to work for him and divide by his stupid rules and I just had to see his disgusting uh, corporate kiss ass face and uh, I uh, you know it's just a piece of shit I'll talk shit about it, which was nice. Uh, we were talking about what, you know, dick things he would do. And one of my coworkers outright called him an asshole to his face, which was great. And then everybody else just kind of, you know, did other things to go against him behind his back like I did. And, um, you know, I guess it strengthened our camaraderie as a team. Jesus Christ. He's literally the worst job I've ever had. I've had the worst boss I've ever had. And I've had a lot of terrible bosses. Don't get me wrong, I've worked for lots and lots and lots of shitty people. However, they were more easy to work for. Because they were shitty in the way that um, most bosses are shitty. They're just uh, miserable, unhappy people who get off on you know, a power trip throw their weight around and tell people what to do. And uh, that I can deal with because that's expected. I know a lot of manage managers are like that. It's going to be like that every job you go to. Uh, there's always going to be that one dick or sometimes several dicks in a workplace that uh, treat you like shit. And so I've worked with many people like that. I know, I know that type really well and I can live with that. It's like, okay, you're an asshole, but you know, you're, you're tolerable. I can, I can, I can ride this out. Um, he was just like, he took it several steps further. And, uh, is literally the shittiest person I've ever worked for. Um, you know, if there was an award, uh, for shittiest boss, uh, in, in, a, in a workplace, he would win, hands down. Um, so yeah, I, uh, I, I have nothing good to say about him. Nothing. Uh, even down to his personality. He was one of those people that acts friendly, but is really condescending. Uh, you know, and, you know, he treats you like you're an imbecile and I can't do anything. And uh, the, first, the first time I actually had a one-on-one -on -one conversation with him, he was so condescending, he actually asked me very basic questions uh, about do I know how to do certain, certain things that are a part of the normal job. Things that, you know, a new hire would know right away. And I'd been working now like a year or two at this point. And I was taken aback, really, because I'm like, really? You, you don't think I know what this is? Like, this thing I've been using, or this position I've been doing, or this task that I have to do every day? Are you literally asking me what this is? Do I know how to do it? And at that point, it was an immediate fuck you to him. Um, and I knew that I was going to hate this guy. And I was right. Uh, more right than I knew at that moment. And uh, my mouth's really dry. I wish I had some water. And uh, I just wish that he, um, just, you know, would suck and fail at everything. I mean, here he does suck. And, he is, and I think he has a failure. Uh, but I hope that catches up with him in the corporate world, and I hope he's out on his ass on the street uh, because of his personality. Uh, 
Because, seriously, fuck that guy. Really, really fuck that guy. And if I ever happen to go into a theater somewhere, as part of this, one of the theaters in this, uh, in this corporation, uh, which is a really big chain, uh, I, if I ever find out that he's the GM there, or even just an AM, just, just an assistant manager, um, yeah, I'm, I'm gonna, I'm gonna say it. Uh, you know, I'm not gonna beat around the bush like I did when he fired me and just, you know, act polite and take it like I did that time. Uh, if I see his face, I'll literally be like, you fucking piece of shit. I hope you die. <laughs> uh, normally I don't feel that way about people, even people I don't like, but uh, he's the one person I think I, I hate enough to be like, yeah, go fucking die, you piece of shit. <laughs> I, hope you, I hope you drop dead. Um, so yeah, that was uh, that was my pleasant experience working with this guy. Um, and like I said, I've had other bosses that were terrible people. But they were terrible in a way that's like a normal kind of terrible boss. Like the kind of boss that, you know, they're just a shitty human being. But they're just being shitty because they're miserable and they like to abuse their position. Uh, and, you know, and that kind of thing is common. A lot of people get, you know, some kind of degree of power and they like to lord it over people and boss people around. It happens everywhere. And, you know, that's just a fact of life, you know, and I know. I've known that since I first started, you know, getting in the work, working world. Uh, I've dealt with it for as long as I've been working. Um, uh, even before, I've dealt with it with shitty teachers I had in school. A shitty principal I once had in school. And uh, other shitty people I've had to deal with. And just, you know, and even just, even just regular employees at, you know, at, at grocery stores or fast food places that I'm just like, really? You're gonna talk shit to me when you're making minimum wage at McDonald's? <laughs> Don't act so high, fucking high and mighty because you have, you know, you're ringing out orders for Big Macs and fries. It's like, you know, cool your jets, man. You're not some kind of fucking, like, <laughs> big baller in a, you know, sky rise building somewhere calling the shots. You're literally a fucking corporate slave. So knock that shit off. That's what I want to say to these people. And a couple of times I have said uh, said as much to certain people like this. Um, you know, what blows me away is like you know, at a grocery store in my hometown. There's this old lady that works uh, the register there, and she's been there since before God was born. I mean, she's been there for years and years and years. She's still there now, and she'll probably be there until she dies. And she's just like the biggest bitch, and I don't know why. I haven't done anything to her. I'm always polite. Um, every time I've gone in, every time I've you know, bought groceries, you know, I've never said anything cross. I've never said anything rude. Um, I've never said anything offensive. I've never, you know, I've never even used language that would be considered offensive. I've never, like, you know, said a you know, curse word in front of her or anything. I've always just been very polite. Um, you know, because, I mean, she hasn't directly done anything to me. You know? She hasn't, you know, personally offended me or personally attacked me in any kind of way. So I really don't have a reason. But nevertheless, every time I go in there, which is not very often these days, but every now and again I still go in there. Nevertheless, she still just like, you know, gives me this eye, you know, gives me the eye, like, you know, I don't like you, you know, like I can tell you're scum. And I, I really just think it's because of what I look like. I think, you know, she sees me and she just thinks I'm this, uh, this oaf, you know, this, this lumbering dumbass that doesn't know anything probably thinks that I don't have any kind of intelligence or any kind of, uh, uh, anything, any good qualities. I, I think she looks at me and just thinks, oh, he's one of those people, you know, you know, 
And you, you know, you know the type of pricks I'm talking about. It's very ultra judgmental pricks. <laughs> they just, you know, they base people, you know, off of what they perceive them to be just based on appearance. Which is sad and happens everywhere and almost everyone does it and I'm used to it. But still, it just irks me why I encounter people like that. I'm like, I've been nothing to you. I've, I've said nothing against you. And yet you, you, you want to judge me. You want to treat me like shit. You want to you know, think this, that, and the other about me. But I've literally, I've done nothing to you. you know? uh, so yeah, just, you know, and I get that all the time. I've had other people do it. You know? I've had co-workers do it, I've had strangers do it, they just look at me and they, they make a whole opinion based on me just by what I look like, you know, often without me even having to really talk to them or have any kind of interaction with them, they just, they just see me and they make a profile in, in their mind of what I must be like, you know, and uh, people that do that just can fuck all the way off, you know, I have no patience for that, I have no patience for shallow, uh, judgmental people who don't even get to know someone before they make an opinion. Um, and, I mean, I know sometimes we all do it, but I'm talking about the people who actively do it without any remorse, without any, uh, awareness that they're doing it, and just doing it to shitty people. I'm not talking about how just we all occasionally will jump to, uh, you know, an assumption about somebody based on because we can all do it. We're all guilty of it. Um, it's built into our system. Uh, it's built into just our society. We, I've done it, even though I really hate doing it, and I don't often do it. There's been times when I, you know, yeah, I've presumed something about somebody based on their look like. And I know that's wrong, and I know it's something we shouldn't do. And honestly, it's something I really don't do that often because I actively reserve judgment until I get to interact with somebody, and then I go from there, you know, I don't often just look at somebody and think, oh yeah, they're that kind of person, I, I wait till, you know, I have a conversation with them, I interact with them, uh, and, and based on the things they say, or based on the things they do, then I can, you know, then I can draw a conclusion and make an opinion, but most people that I see that I just, you know, walk by and never say anything to you. I don't think a thing about it. They're just people. I can't make an opinion because I don't have any info. I don't have any data to draw any conclusions from. So I just don't. <laughs> and I wish more people did that. Um, to quote the comedian Robert Wall, he once said, judge slowly. And I think it's very true, whether it's matters like that or just anything. Your reactions to things to art, reactions to something you may find offensive, is judge slowly. Really, really think about it. Really think about, well, is this really offensive? Or is this just my emotional reaction to something? Um, but either way, I think it's good advice. Just judge slowly. Yeah, I think that's very wise advice, honestly. And uh, so, yeah, it's just... I don't know. I just wanted to do a little bit of story time and just talk about my experience working at that theater, uh, working for that manager, and um, just uh, kind of lay it out on the line and talk about that. So uh, I guess that's it. I don't have anything else to talk about. Um, I kind of went off on a tangent. I didn't expect it to, but oh well. All of these uh, videos are being just rambling on about one thing. Just chasing that, you know, that rabbit through that garden and out of topics. Uh, but yeah, I, I guess that's it for today, and I'll be back tomorrow to do another one of these. And uh, I hope you're doing okay, Leela. I hope everything's going all right. Uh, I hope I get to talk to you again soon. And um, I hope you have a good day. And I'll try to have a good day as well. So until I talk to you tomorrow, I uh, will catch you later.